So um, to fix a bit ideas, so, the, so you could think about, uh, for example, the, um, the classical consumer demand setup. So you observe a consumer and the different prices. He's choosing uh, bundles, right? And maybe you want to know whether his um, choice behavior is somehow um, consistent with him maximizing some preference relation. Okay, so then if you want to, to, to test the theory, maybe you want to run an experiment to test the theory, then of course a natural question is, so what, what, what kind of prices uh, should I uh, offer to this guy to test the theory? So is there, in other words, is there a good way of, of um, sampling budget sets that uh, somehow gives you uh, uh, good information about whether uh, your theory is valid? So, in this case of linear budget sets, of course, you can't uh, sample all potential prices. A, there are infinitely many of those, but maybe there's some smart way of um, choosing some particular prices and it gives you some, some idea about the theory. Or you could also think, I mean, the other way around. Uh, maybe you observe in the field some, uh, some uh, choice behavior, right, and some budget sets. So, and this guy happens to... Uh, uh, confirm our theory on those um, budget sets. Is this good news? Is this, uh, or is this maybe because the collection of budget sets that he was uh, seeing was basically such that he can, he, it was very hard for him not, not to match our theory um, of choice behavior, okay? So what I'm doing uh, basically in, 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 in this paper is I want to address this as uh, sort of uh, from a computer science point of view. So what I want to do is uh, use property testing. So um, basically the question is, uh, so you have some choice function modeling some uh, behavior of an agent, some choice behavior. So um, is it possible by sampling just a few budget sets to distinguish between a choice function, which is, for example, rationalizable by a preference relation or some, uh, from uh, some choice function, which is in some sense far away from rationalizable. So it takes this computer science perspective of, uh, first of all, of approximation, right? You want to distinguish maybe not between perfectly rational uh, agents and other agents, but rather between a perfectly rational agent and somebody who is sort of approximately irrational. And you take this complexity perspective where you want with basically to uh, reduce the number of, um, or you want to have a small number of, of uh, samples to achieve this goal. Okay, so, so this is a high-level uh, high question that I'm asking. So what I'm doing more specifically, so I'm looking at the review preference theory, and I formulate it as a property testing problem. So um, this question of basically good good sampling methods or what, what, what is a good collection of budgets is, 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 has been studied. I'm not the first uh, who has studied this problem, so there's this literature on power measures, so I relate it to this literature. And in particular, what, what I'm suggesting, so um, to define a power measure, right, you have your theory, for example, rational choice theory, somebody maximizing his preferences, um, and you want to compare to some altern alternative hypothesis. Okay, so what I'm... Uh, suggesting in this paper is that uh, this alternative should be um, that this um, choice behavior of the agent is quantifiable um, far from, from rational. And I use this in terms, I formulate it in terms of rationality indices. So there's this literature on basically um, defining indices of rationality, degrees of rationality, so you have some, some quantifiable notion of rationality, and I want uh, to use this as an alternative, basically, to the um, hypothesis that um, this choice behavior is rationalizable. Okay, so what I have uh, so far in, in terms of results, I, have, I look at the abstract choice setup. So the abstract choice setup is basically a setup where you just have some objects, maybe, and you have to choose among different combination uh, uh, of objects. So you always pick an object. So what I have there is a simple testing algorithm or uh, testing procedure which, which works well. And I show this, that this has, uh, in an asymptotic sense, optimal sample complexity. Right. 
so far so clear. So here's the outline what, uh, of what I want to present. So maybe not everybody's familiar, uh, familiar with review preference theory, so I give a very brief introduction to review preference theory. I want to talk a bit about power measures, uh, rationality indices, and then um, I formulate this uh, property testing problem of rationalizability. And I have a conclusion. Okay. So first, um, review preference theory. So what is it? So much of standard economic theory basically assumes or makes, makes the assumption that uh, agents behave as if they maximize some, some preference relation or utility function. So it's meant in, to be in the sense of as if, so we don't necessarily assume that they really have this object in the head, just the behavior should be uh, consistent with the maximization of a preference relation. So it should be transitive, for example. Okay. And so review preference theory uh, takes a point of view, okay, we, we can't observe this, this preferences, we don't know it, but we observe some choices that agents make, and we want to uh, infer from the observed choices whether this is, uh, the choice behavior is consistent with the maximization of a preference relation. And usually this comes in terms of some axioms, so they're called uh, axioms of review preferences, so the data has to, the choice data has to exhibit certain regularities which are phrased in terms of axioms. Okay? So if, if you wanted to, to uh, use this basically as a practical test, so now you have this review preference theory, so it gives you some some axioms of, of choice behavior, and now you, maybe you want to really test it, maybe you want to put it to the lab, or you, you're interested in uh, applying it to field data. So one, one natural, um, or maybe one natural problem is, so you may, uh, basically it makes a statement about a large universe of potential budget sets where this uh, choice theory should apply to. Um, but of course, we can't observe all of them normally. So what, what should, we, should we do to test it, right? Um, then sometimes we, we can't, can't, I mean, design the data generating process. We just observe some field data of, of uh, choice data. And so there are some studies, empirical studies, for example, I cite Varian. He looks at time series data of, of consumer uh, demand in the US, so um, basically their review preference theory is a test of the existence of a um, representative uh, consumer. So um, there you, you run into the problem that basically um, on this budget set that you observe, the theory has a, very little uh, to say, so why is that? So think about the case of um, linear budget sets, right? So if the prices vary not that much, but uh, maybe your income is increasing a lot, so basically the budget sets are contained in each other. You, uh, somehow every or almost every uh, choice behavior on this kind of collection of budget sets is uh, rationalizable. So the theory doesn't really tell you much about, uh, about or doesn't really restrict your choice behavior on, on this kind of uh, data set. So any, almost any behavior is rationalizable. As a third, basically, problem, if you take this uh, theory literally, um, you just uh, have a binary classification, so either somebody is, somebody's behavior is rationalizable or it is not, so you, there's no, I mean, a notion of being close to rationalizable or being uh, far away from it. So what I'm doing in this slide, so, uh, Basically, I'm taking very literally this um, theory of review preferences. So uh, think about uh, some agent choosing among n alternatives. You can think of objects that you can choose among. Right? So what, what the theory literally is suggesting, it tells us, OK, look at any potential subset of, of those n objects and tell me um, what do you pick and we do this for, for all of those subsets. And then in the end, uh, after 
we have elicited all of the choices, we test the weak axiom of repeated preferences. And if you pass a test, then uh, theory is confirmed, otherwise not, right? But of course, this seems to be very in infeasible in practice, right? You have to elicit many budget sets. It's exponential in the number of objects. So uh, the question is, is there a better way of, of doing it with less uh, budget sets? Okay. Is the motivation so far clear? All right. So this, um, this problem of quantifying or um, saying something about uh, a collection of budget sets being uh, suitable to test a theory, this is, uh, has been studied in the literature under the name of power measures. So basically um, what you want to do is you have your choice theory. Uh, so in this case, you, uh, your choice theory is that your choice behavior is rationalizable by a, a preference relation. And you need to compare it to some alternative hypothesis. So one way of doing it is just to compare it to the alternative hypothesis of an agent just randomly picking something from the budget sets. Okay. So this is uh, what Brona has um, suggested. And on some, I mean, some, some uh, collection of budget sets that you observe, actually this, this test is already uh, quite informative. Basically, uh, in, in many uh, consumer data sets, uh, it's basically the case that random choice behavior looks very rational, right? So naturally occurring data seems to be not, not very suitable to distinguish between uh, a randomly selecting agent and uh, somebody who uh, behaves as if he maximizes the preference relation, okay? So you can talk about power in, um, in at least two ways, I think. So you can take um, the perspective of an experimenter. So you want to design some experiments. So you want to design some sampling methods. You want to, uh, to, to elicit choices. So what you do, you look at it from an ex ante point of view before you run your experiment. Uh, you, you specify some uh, uh, sampling probabilities, so you have some distribution over budget sets. And then you want uh, to uh, know whether you, you want to compare, um, or you, you want to run this, uh, do this power analysis. You want to know how likely a, it is under your alternative hypothesis that your theory is, um, is vi uh, violated. So how likely is it that in this Broner index, uh, somebody randomly picking um, uh, points in the budget sets uh, will violate, uh, for example, the weak axiom of repeat preferences? Or you can look, you have run an experiment or you have observed some um, data in the field, and now you have this collection of um, budget sets, so you want to, to uh, know, um, you want to evaluate um, how, how suitable was this collection of, of budget sets actually to, uh, to say something about your theory. So what I'm doing in, in this, this uh, talk, I'm, I'm mostly talking about this ex ante perspective, so I want to talk about designing experiments. Um, but I have some lower bounds result, which actually also would apply something about the data needed, so the amount of data ne needed to, to do, do this ex post uh, evaluation. Okay, I was talking about um, notions of being close to rational, so there's this entire literature on rationality indices um, where you basically want to have a notion of somebody being close to rational or not so close. So there are many papers. In particular, I'm looking at this one because this is something that I'm using, um, which gives you some reasonable index of, of, of rationality. Okay. So what I'm doing in, in this um, uh, property testing approach, I'm take uh, one of those indices, actually this one. I have some notion of, of uh, 
being close or far away from rationalizable. And I take, take this basically as an alternative hypothesis uh, to the hypothesis that uh, my choice behavior is um, rationalizable, okay? So um, I want to know, or well, the power measure is um, how likely is it that somebody who is quantifiably irrational, how likely is it that he will violate, for example, the weak axiom of revealed preferences on the collection of choice sets or budget sets um, that I'm offering to him, okay? So in this formulation, basically the, 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 uh, the question of designing a experiment with high, uh, high power um, translate to a uh, property testing problem in the sense of property testing in computer science. So I'm doing this exercise um, basically for the abstract choice setup. So what is it? So you specify some set of alternatives, and you have some choice data. So you have some potential budget sets uh, to which uh, the theory applies. And I allow possibly for random choice so this guy um, facing some budget sets, B picks with prob some probability this um, option X, which is contained in the budget set B. And normally what you do, you observe some, just some sample from, from this, uh, not the entire universe of potential budget sets, okay? So uh, abstract choice setup would be the case where this, uh, any potential subset of, of, of this ground set is a potential budget set. So you can think, as I said, about objects and any collection of objects is a feasible budget set. Consu you can think of the consumer demand case where uh, you just look at linear budget sets. So uh, there, the alternatives are just consumption bundles and you face some prices, right? Okay. So, um, so I'm doing this property testing exercise actually for, first I, I do it for this very uh, reduced form index, what, what, I, what I call a counting index, but basically the, um, the proof or the procedure is very similar if you look at this swap index. So what, what are those indices? So first one is just, um, so you observe some choices from budget sets and you want to assign a rationality index to this collection of data. So you observe this um, guy choosing some, some um, alternatives from those budget sets, and in, in this index, in this counting index, you just count the number of, of errors that he makes. So you uh, look at all potential preferences that, that would um, ration, uh, could rationalize this behavior, and you look for each of them how many uh, choices don't maximize this preference relation, and then you just take the minimum over all of those preferences. The swap index is doing something a bit more sophisticated. There you also weight, basically, the errors. So if your preference relation, uh, that is your candidate preference relation of rationalizing the choice behavior, ranks many um, alternatives above the thing that you should rank first, then uh, all of those should be taken into account. So you weight by the numbers of um, objects that are ranked above. Okay, is this clear? Okay. So there are other indices you can think of, especially in this consumer demand setup. I won't go into that. So, once you have this uh, index, you can do this property testing exercise. So as I said, you uh, can think of this uh, experiment, designing experiment as designing some, some randomized algorithm, which has some access to a choice function. And what the, this uh, algorithm should do is should um, classify a choice function. So in particular, it should accept all choice fun functions that are rationalizable. And it should, with some 
given uh, probability that we fix before we it should uh, reject all uh, choice functions that are far away from rationalizable according to our criterion. Okay? And we use an epsilon parameter on, on measuring how close we allow uh, some choice function to be uh, to rational. Okay? And this is just uh, another way of putting it. You can also think of it as a hypothesis test. Yes, please. No, I want to dis what I'm doing, I want to distinguish the rationalizable guys from those that are far away from rationalizable. Okay? So I think the best one is log. Um, it depends. I mean, you can, uh, this is one parameter that you can adjust uh, depending on how much of a guarantee you want to have, right? Right. So what do you think about it? You've heard that they're saying that a lot of people are not rational, they're close to rational. Yeah. Yeah. And I might want to do a test to determine whether this is in fact close to rational or whether this is at log. And I'm wondering if you can do that. Well, what, what, what I'm doing is basically I uh, reject those guys that are far away from rational. So. Could you also get the guys that are close to rational? It could happen that I um, misclassify some of those guys, yes. You can choose epsilon, yes, that's, that's the point. So you can make it very small. You can, if you put epsilon to zero, then you're just doing a, a normal, um, basically, distinguishing be between rational and irrational guys, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I understand you can choose epsilon in the second order, but yeah. you also can compare the two different epsilon. So ah, you, you could put here, uh, uh, this is just one choice theory. You could also put here some other epsilon, right? This would be a different problem, right? But you can. Is this a five? Okay. Um, you could do that. You could do that, but that's not what you're doing. No, but uh, okay. the, the crucial point is that this epsilon should be uh, smaller than this epsilon, right? Yeah. So having this sort of thick uh, boundary between the two cl classes uh, gives me a way of, of reducing the sampling complexity, sampling only a few budget sets. Okay. Oh, this is what. I was saying before. Okay, you could also think of different epsilons. All right. So here's some results. Okay, so this is um, the basic case of just looking at this abstract choice setup. Okay, uh, so what can we do here? And I just have some very, I mean, natural and simple, um, basically, testing algorithm. So what does it do? First of all, so what, what, uh, what it does, it uh, has to sample uh, something which, which is um, basically the number, the number of budget sets should be roughly the number of alternatives, right? And this uh, a number of budget sets um, should, is of course related to the error, right? If I have a small error, then I want to have a small error, then I have to sample more budget sets, okay? But it gives, so, Doing the full, basically, uh, review preference test would require you to, to uh, sample something which is exponential, right, and the number of alternatives. And here you have just something linear. This is a, so it, by allowing this uh, for this uh, threshold there, you can uh, reduce the number, I mean, the sampling complexity exponentially. Okay. So the test is very simple because we look at this abstract choice setup where every potential subset of uh, alternatives is feasible. What you can do, you can use um, budget sets basically to generate a tentative preference ordering, which is a candidate of rationalizing um, um, the choice behavior. So um, you just start with all, all potential alternatives, ask the, um, the Subject, what do you pick from there? Okay, he picks something. Okay, so you eliminate that choice. You have another budget set. You ask, what do you pick if this choice is not available, and so on. You iterate. This gives you some 
tentative preference ordering. And then you just compare it to uh, randomly sampled budget sets. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So why would I expect? So, so you're, you're testing cat spit, the, the, the idea that maybe those kinds of errors that are not very important would happen very, very often. For this, this is just for the, so two answers. Um, so I, it's worst case analysis. So I'm not making any assumption about the irrational behavior. I just want to take the irrational guy who on, on, on my, in my experiment looks the closest to rational, right? Is that the worst case or the best case? That's the worst case. Do you think we should be picking up exactly uh, the people who are irrational in, in uniform ways? It depends. So the sampling depends, of course, on the index that you have in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, I mean, I just counting errors. So this gives you this uniform distribution, OK? So if I do something, uh, this is the next slide. If, if I do this rationality index where I weight basically uh, the errors by how severe they are, right? Then you should um, sample differently. So in this case, you should rather sample um, basically proportional to the size of, uh, of the budget sets because larger budget sets allow you to make more, I mean, severe errors, right? So it depends on this. It's somehow, I guess, it's, it's um, contained in, in the notion of, of, of a rationality index. So, um, yes. OK. Did this answer your, your question somehow? All right. Um, so you can do this. Uh, so this is a very simple rationality test. It works. You can modify it um, to also I mean, to different rationality indices, so this is good. But is this the best that we can do? So uh, I promised you a lower bound result. So this is what I have. So it turns out um, that up to a logarithmic factor, you basically have to elicit at least as many budget sets as there are alternatives, yes? No, I'm generating as a budget set, right? And I meant that you're generating as an experiment, but the budget sets yes. can be generated. Yeah. So what is the decision that you're supposed to So you, 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 you want to compare, it's a, as I said, a worst case uh, approach. So you, you can think about any potential, you could put any potential decision maker who is irrational into this experiment. I look uh, what he's generating, and I basically. Um, take the, the, the worst case approach. I, the worst among all, 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 I mean, I took all potential uh, irrational guys, put them in the experiment, and the one who's giving us the hardest time to, to, uh, to distinguish him between. Uh, I, guess, I guess what we're saying is you're, you're saying people are actually rational, but they make mistakes, and you're measuring how likely they can make mistakes in a uniform way. That seems like the exercise that you're doing. Does that sound? Yes. So you're not taking any statistical that I'm This is what I meant by worst case, right? So yeah, it's yeah, a yeah.
Okay. This would be a different problem, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't want to make a claim. <laughs> okay. Time is over. I have a lower bound. Um, it's tied up to a logarithmic factor. Uh, you can use basically a technique. This is uh, some nice paper by Blaze and, and co-authors where they relate uh, basically the problem of testing uh, um, to a problem of com communication. So what, what you do is uh, you have a re uh, you relate this this problem of testing to to what something is which is called the disjointness problem. So most of the people in the audience probably know better than I'm what, what this is actually. But uh, okay, you can just use this proof template by uh, Blaise and the courses. So what you're basically doing is so you you've I guess I should come to it. You can ask me about the proof afterwards. Um, but basically, you can um, use um, some known techniques from property testing to, to derive a lower bound. I mean, they introduce it in the context of testing properties of Boolean functions, right? And if you can think of um, choice function, basically, of, as a special kind of Boolean function, right? So it makes some sense that you can use these techniques in this context. Point that I want to make is that this uh, testing algorithm is, is, in some sense, close to optimal. Okay. So um, this is just, I mean, the start. So I presented this this idea of, of uh, re, uh, testing reveal preference uh, theory as a property testing problem. So um, I maybe picked the easiest problem and have some some results about it. You can think of different problems. You can think of the consumer demand case, right? You can think of different choice series that you want to test. Um, you have basically, I've designed you an experiment. You could put it to the lab, many other things that you can do. Just wanted, basically my goal was to, to suggest this, this, this approach to, to designing experiments for choice series, which is inspired by this uh, property testing approach from CS. I think I stop here. <laughs>